All right, so our learning targets for today is I can solve multi-step equations by clearing the decimals. Let's take a look at an example, and I, it's it's not uh, super easy to explain what we're doing. So I'm going to show you in an example so you can see. those decimals in there um, and you know, maybe you're a decimal master I hope you are but if you're not and you're just like oh man look at all those decimals I don't even want to try this problem um, well that's good because I have something to help you out so we know the rule that says that if you do something to one side of the equal sign you have to do it to the other and so far in math what we've done is we've used that to apply inverse operations to solve equations but it doesn't necessarily have to be an inverse operation. As long as you're doing something to both sides, the equation is going to stay balanced. So check this out. I am going to multiply both sides of my equation by 1,000. And let me show you what happens when we do that. I'm going to distribute this. So really, basically, every term is going to be multiplied by 1,000 at this point. Um, and it has three zeros, which means we're going to be moving everything over three decimal places. So this will become negative 6. And this will become 10x. This will become 20x. And this will become 154. Yeah, Maddie. Um, it's like if there was like 0 0.2, it would be multiplied by like 10 or something. Yeah, so what you do is you pick... Um, the greatest number of decimal places. So in this case, um, it's the thousandths place here and here. So I chose to multiply by a thousand because that would get rid of every single decimal. If I had only multiplied by a hundred, then that would have left us with negative 0.6. It would have left us with 15.4. So we would still have decimals in there. And I prefer to just get rid of all of them. Yeah. Um, and one of the most common mistakes is People will decide what they want to multiply by, and then um, instead of moving it over the, a specific number of decimal places like they're supposed to, they'll just make everything whole numbers. So they'll make this negative 6, 1x, 2x, and 154. But when you multiply by 1,000, you need to be very careful to move it over the appropriate number of decimal places, even if that means that you have to add a 0 like we did for the 10. Okay. Now, this is a lot prettier, right? <laughs> A lot more manageable. So I'm going to go through the process now of finishing solving this. Um, there are no, there's no grouping. There's no like terms that can be combined on either side. So I'm going to then jump in um, by uh, moving all of my variables to one side of the equal sign. So we're going to have negative 6 is equal to 10x plus 154. Then I am going to subtract 154 to, from both sides. And I'm left with negative 160 is equal to 10x. And we're going to divide both sides by 10. And we get negative 16 is equal to x. Kind of nice, right? To get rid of all those frac or all those decimals before you solve it. Now, the only sticky thing about this is the, is the checking your solution portion of this, because we, we wouldn't want to, to plug it in um, after we've cleared the decimals, because you may have made a mistake when you did that, and then it would seem like your answer was correct when actually it's not. So whenever we check an answer, we plug it into the original one, which means we're going to have to deal with some decimals. So 
I would recommend that if you are crunched for time, like you're taking a quiz and I would go through and solve everything first. And if you have time, go back and check your answers, okay? But I'm gonna walk you through the check portion just um, to make sure uh, we did this correctly. So this is gonna be negative six thousandths. And I'm gonna multiply by negative 16 here. And I made a mistake on this when I was uh, showing the last class. I'm gonna try not to make a mistake this time. Okay, so I'm gonna multiply these out. So this is gonna be um, negative 0 0.16. And this is going to be negative 32.32, okay. And then if I add these together, I'm gonna get negative one, or um, negative 0.166. Okay, and then here, um, if I subtract these because one is negative and one is positive, I am going to get negative 166,000. So I know that's correct. Cool, right? Don't you have to like divide the negative 16 by like a thousand to multiply it by a thousand to begin with? Like, what do you do? Uh, let's see. What what part here? Because you said like negative 16 equals x, but like wouldn't you have to like divide by a thousand because you multiply it by a thousand at the beginning? No, because I did it to both sides, so the equation is still balanced. So um, like for instance, let's say that you have um, 5x plus 2 is equal to 12, okay? And if I were to solve this, we would know that, that the x has to be 2, right? Because this would be 10 plus 2. Now if I multiply both sides of this by, let's say, 10, you're going to see that it's not going to change the answer. Okay, so I'm going to subtract 20, subtract 20, so 50x is equal to 100, divide both sides by 50, and I get that x is equal to 2. So it does not, oh sorry guys, I thought I had more time. Um, have a great weekend, and uh, you don't have any homework, so I'll just see you on Monday, and we're going to work on some fractions on Monday. Does that make sense, um, Courtney? That was a great question. If, uh, if I gave you um, uh, a quiz, go ahead and hand it back. Oh, and if I owe you candy from that quiz.org, come see me. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry, I totally forgot about that. Here. You too. Okay, I'll take that. Thank you for that.